Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Rapid Reactions brought to you by Buyers Auto. And it is another Ohio State blowout. 56 to seven, Ohio State over Michigan State was the final on Saturday, senior day in the horseshoe. And it was over pretty quickly. It was 49 to nothing at halftime, seven straight touchdowns to start the game for the Buckeyes. Six of them through the air from CJ Stroud. Uh, I would have to say that's a Heisman Trophy caliber performance. Uh, the starting defense, pitching a shutout, uh, removing Kenneth Walker the third from that equation as a Heisman Trophy wow. candidate and all yeah. for all intents and purposes and setting up an absolutely huge one uh, next week, the game, the rivalry. We'll get to that, of course, in the days ahead. But right now, Spencer Holbrook, Tim May, Jeremy Birmingham, and me, Austin Ward, we're talking about what happened in here today, which is about the most impressive performance that you can possibly put on the field. Yeah, that was a fully armed and operational battle station uh, that Ohio State put on the field in the first half. I just don't know what else to say about the way that C.J. Stroud and these receivers are playing. It's a level that we've never seen in my lifetime at Ohio State. <laughs> Certainly not in yours or yours because you guys are younger. Tim? Not, no. I mean, it's Nothing. flat out insane. And it's not even just that they're putting up big numbers. All three guys had 100 yards for the second time this season, second time in school history. Um, <laughs> it's, it's that they're just so wide open. Every play, there's no one around them. and, it, and I guess to me what makes it even more impressive what C.J. Stroud does is that on the occasional play where there is coverage, like the touchdown he threw to Chris Olave in the, se in the second quarter, first quarter, yeah. like to make that throw when you don't ever have coverage is really impressive yes. because it's just like you, he, there's, he has the look of a, of a pole assassin right now. Every week. What kind of look is that? Wow. Oh, you saw it today. <laughs> there goes Jerry Emick. Every week, a couple of his throws go into tighter and tighter windows, and that shows the confidence that he's continuing to grow. But I want to make this about the whole entire team. That defense played as well as you're possibly going to see an Ohio State defense play today. To shut Kenneth Walker down to, I think, 25 yards, and 15 of them came on one carry on the second drive of the game, yeah. it's absolutely remarkable what they were able to do. And if it's any sign of what's to come and what this def run defense can be, Michigan's going to have a very, very long day next week because that was about as impressive as you can possibly be against a Heisman Trophy candidate running back. And you know what helps the best defense to shut down a running back like that? Is being up 35 to nothing. Absolutely. He got six carries. Yeah. Like 21 so, And that's what people may say, oh, well, I don't know. You know, they just – Kenneth Walker didn't do anything because he didn't get the football. We saw some national pundits weighing in on that during the game. Well, you can't run the ball against this team that's scoring every time they go on the field. And yeah. then beyond that, the pass defense showed you know, remarkable growth. Peyton Thornton was 8 of 26 at the half. I don't care what he did after it was 49 <laughs> nothing. Who cares? Nobody cares. And Peyton Thornton doesn't even care. And so uh, to have that kind of performance, Zach Harrison getting his, his hands on every football imaginable, it seemed like right. every pass he was throwing, it seemed like it was batted down by one of those guys. The, the pass rush was great. The interior pressure was great from Haskell Garrett, like I said, like I said it would be. Yeah. And like the, the back end played well. Don't strain uh, yourself. Denzel Burke had the Denzel Burke had the pass breakup that really I think sealed the way this game was going to go. Maybe if they convert that, it's, maybe it's a different story. But just a, a dominant performance. I don't know how they could have played better. Yeah, you used to hope his shoulders okay after that because he did go back in the game. But you know they didn't play him much in the second. Well, obviously not at all. But what I'm going to get to is this was as complete a game as Ohio State has played. I'm talking about against a credible opponent in a long time. That's where Ryan Day has to feel really good coming out of this. Two straight games, they've gone over 600 yards of offense. Uh, two straight games, they've gone over 50 points, legit 50 points. Could have been more, but uh, the dogs that did, did put back in the, in the last kennel. two weeks in the first half. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> C.J. Stroud could have had the game of games of quarterbacks uh, if if. Uh, if a Ryan Day had so ordained it, but instead they get uh, Cal McCord in there and blah, 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 and we watched what was like watching a melting glacier there in the second half, uh, kind of tough to watch. But uh, this was as impressive as it gets, in my opinion. Well, I think that that's a, a very good point, Tim, because we're not talking about a complete performance against Rutgers or Maryland or yeah. any of the stuff where early in the season we're saying you can see improvement, but take into account the level of competition. This was the number seven team in the country. Now that's according to the College Football Playoff Selection Committee, which has its flaws, yeah. um, but yeah, this but. this team came from behind to beat Michigan. So I know that they are probably slightly overrated, but they won those games, and Ohio State took them seriously, yeah. and that's, I think, what makes it more impressive because when it goes down in the record books, it will say number four against number seven. Yep. And number four 
won by 49 points and could have won by as many as they wanted to. Obviously, Michigan State's whole goal today was to not get one-dimensional and to make sure that they could mix up the run, mix in the pass. Coming into the game without Jalen Naylor put them in a, in a bad spot. Uh, Reed, Jaden Reed, hurt himself at the end of the first half, didn't play in the second half, was in a boot. Kenneth Walker was gimping around. Yeah. Uh, Xavier Henderson had to leave the game. He had a shoulder issue. Like, well, Buckeyes, Jeremy Rucker the, buried him yeah. in under the dirt. The, yeah. Buc I mean, the Buckeyes physically beat impressive. them up. The Buckeyes beat them up physically, and I don't think Michigan State was expecting that. I think that's sort of one of the things about Ohio State that continues to impress me is I really think this is a team that can win in a whole bunch of different styles. And I, I know we get all locked into the passing yards and the, you know, the, the glitz and glamour of that wide receiver group. But I really think the Buckeyes are a much tougher team than people give them credit for. I mean, it started first play of the game. Travion Henderson tried to get in a fight with <laughs> Jacob Panashuk from Michigan State. I don't know exactly what happened, but like that was a, a wake up call. When you combine that with Haskell Garrett's fiery speech uh, at the skull, skull session, you could tell the Buckeyes came into this one with their hair on fire. Yeah, and, and that's not going to stop. I mean, they, look who's next on the schedule. So Who? The, the <laughs> momentum, uh, they call them that team up north. Oh, okay. But the momentum is just going to carry in from this game because the thing that I think I might take away from this stadium the most from the entire day is the fact that every time we talk to Ryan Day after a game, you know, great win, want to thank the fans, uh, great atmosphere, glad to, to have another Big Ten win. It's hard to win in the Big Ten. No, none of that. Not today. It no. was uh, – Onto the team up north. He onto said he was already north. thinking about them in the second oh, half, which, of course. if you're up by 49 points, that's Go ahead. a little yeah. bit easier. And that's yeah. also playing into what Tim was talking about, taking players out. Denzel Burke did not need to push it if he was close. Nope. If you had, That was a scary moment. Uh, I'm telling you what. <laughs> no, yeah. It did look, it looked <laughs> pretty nice. He, he, he came on the bench and he was going like yeah. this. I go, okay. He came straight over, and, and he did go back in the game. We'll make yes. that point. But, you know, the, the fact that you didn't have to stress about Michigan State, again, a number seven ranked top ten opponent, uh, playing it had championship aspirations of its own yeah. and then you got to pull pull a bunch of guys out and get ready i mean think about thayer munford uh obviously it's his senior day but he's been banged up throughout the year we've talked about that with paris johnson haskell garrett has also you know these guys that they got a rare opportunity in a meaningful game before the most important one on their schedule where they got an afternoon off like yeah. they weren't playing a mac team out here and they still got to spend the entire second half getting ready for next Saturday in the big house. Just think what we saw today too though. We saw Ohio State truly come of age as a football team in my opinion, except Noah Ruggles misses his first field goal yeah. or pat attempt. How there. predictable e was that? Exactly, exactly. The first, second half, like I said, was not you know to re be remembered. But, but past that, the offense took care of business and C.J. Stroud took that huge leap up in the Heisman Trophy race. And then the defense took care of business and took care of Maybe his closest competitor, at least coming into the game. Maybe it's Bryce Young now from Alabama. We'll see as this day unfolds because we're we're here in mid afternoon uh, after this game. But uh, it's remarkable Which what we witnessed. Which two schools Alabama playing today? Yeah, they're know? playing Arkansas. Oh, uh, so, they've already played. Oh, they already, already played New Mexico they're, State and Mercer. They already had their Georgia cupcakes. did theirs. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. yeah. Normally, but the, but the bottom you know line. I mean. But just this was a remarkable afternoon in a lot of ways. And like uh, Austin was talking about a while ago, I mean that just sets up this ridiculous, you know. Winner moves on to the Big Ten Championship game next week, and it's it's going to be cool. Today sealed C.J. Stroud's invitation to yeah. New York. There's no way that he's not going to be in the top three, <laughs> top four candidates. And it's, it's a little bit bizarre because the national sh shift now has been, well, could he do this without Garrett Wilson? Could he do this without Chris Olave, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Travion Henderson? I wasn't listening to the broadcast, but I guess it was suggested that uh, Bryce Young is doing it with a lot less talent around him, which is a crazy wow. thing to say out loud Wow! when you're comparing Alabama and Ohio State's rosters. But wow. I know, do know that I watch this team every single week, and C.J. Stroud is blessed with incredible gifts. But the throws that he's making, even when they're, co even when they're covered, that Spencer's talking about, tight windows, when they're wide open, it's not like Garrett Wilson got to the 20 and had to turn around and wait for the ball no. to show up. That ball was also on the money. The so that was, my, that was my favorite throw of the day. Let's not forget, though, on that throw to Chris Olave where he had to, you know, look look well, however which many directions to the catch one down it. here. Down in here. CJ yeah. Stroud got destroyed on sure that play. And there was a moment in my head where in week two and week three, I think CJ Stroud may stay on the turf for a couple seconds after that and, and really think about what he had just what had just happened to him. 
He stayed down. But Think about what you've was, done. <laughs> but Young he man. Stayed, he stayed down today, but it was because he was looking and seeing if Chris Olave caught it. And when he popped up, he didn't move the shoulder. He didn't, uh, you know, uh, you know hit his hand, his hands pants, on his yeah. knees, you know, check whatever. He was like, okay, let's, let's get to the next play. And there's a certain uh, level of toughness that and, comes with what he's doing right and now. And that's, you know, that's a fair point and part of it, the overall growth and transformation from – you know, start number one of his career to oh, now. But crazy. if you're debating the other candidates and you want to give more credit to Garrett Wilson, I have no problem with that. You want to give more credit to Travion Henderson and Chris Olave, sure, that's cool too. But the Heisman Trophy is almost always going to go to the leader of the best team and the best offense. And right now, hmm. that is C.J. Stroud. Yep, 27 of 29 for 442, four, how many yards are they? 29 half? of 31. Tw- but in the first half, 27 uh, of 29. I think it was two. Six touchdowns. It was three. 393. Yeah, three something. 393. Uh, 393 at half time. I, I, I should have brought I do notes. wonder, yeah. how many first one pick wide receivers did Joe Burrow have in 2019 when he won the Heisman? Well, I, again, I made that point as well. Like, that's the Joe Burrow plan. Like, yeah, you're throwing so, to wide open receivers yeah. who are really good. You don't hold that against the quarterback. But you, no. You still have to make it run. And if you just look at the numbers on the season, I mean, I don't, we can compare CJ to Bryce Young or to Matt Corral or pick your quarterback around the country that you want to hype up Kenny Pickett for Pete's sake. Um, <laughs> you know, there are people. Uh, CJ Stroud didn't play against Akron. You could add another 500 Correct. yards and, and seven six touchdowns, touchdowns yeah. against Akron that he In didn't get. In the first get. quarter. And, and, and again, none of those things matter as the Buckeyes head into the game week but let's it, we all have sat here and watched for the first four weeks of the season people take a lot of shots at cj shroud and it is time to take them back and publicly apologize if you're one of the people doing it let me make one other <laughs> one point too uh people saw history again today at, at ohio state uh chris olavi caught his 34th and 35th touchdown passes as a Buckeye, the most by any Buckeye ever, passes David Boston like he's not even playing anymore, which he's not. Poor David Boston the last couple of weeks, it's you know, with stretch. the Jackson Smith and Jigba's 15 catch day, but the most in Ohio State. People are witnessing historical moments and days here in Ohio State football, and, and I'm not sure some are still appreciating what they're seeing. And next week, if Chris Olave does what he does, what he does to Michigan. We'll just, you know, if he has a, a um, standard day at the office against Michigan and Garrett Wilson has, I think, 11 yards or something like that, they're going to have three guys over 1,000 yards each. And that's only happened five other times in program history. They've been playing the game since, I think, the McKinley administration. And for that to... Well, I don't know when that well is. Well before that. For, for everything that they're... For everything, well before that. I'm a history guy. Okay. Oh, okay. For everything that they're doing you yeah, know, maybe, me to might be improve, right. to have those kind of numbers <laughs> and still be able to look at the quarterback and say, he's helping them do that. You know, it's not just those guys are super talented. He's making those plays. Like, you know, he was asked a couple times about the way he was looking off safeties, the way he was, you know, baiting safeties into going this way so he can throw here. Like, that's not stuff that wide receivers do at all. And they can feel yeah. when he's – looking off those guys to get them the ball. But, but Ryan Day and Brian Hartline and that offensive staff are, are making a lot of that happen too. I mean, their schemes, it's phenomenal. their scheming is off the chart right now. You know why I love and hate sports? Because if the Buckeyes don't win next week, none of this stuff matters. Mm. And it's easy to get caught up in, in what we see today, but it, like you do have to turn around and immediately turn the focus to Live Michigan. the moment, though, man. And, and, you know, I thought it was – Ryan Day was talking about how he on the sideline today was thinking about it in the second half. Chris Olave said, we're going to celebrate tonight. Like, th- especially the seniors, these guys have earned the opportunity to take a moment and reflect on what they've done here. And to guys like Olave, who brought up the fact that he was the lowest-rated guy in his recruiting class, yeah. like – to, to leave here and play his final game in Ohio Stadium and breaking records out the door, it's just it's why you just love sports. That's yeah. why I love sports. Yeah. It was a special day for Ohio State, a huge win, 56-7. to seven. It is setting the table for an even bigger week next week in the big house. The game is here. Of course, we're going to have full coverage of that starting right now and moving forward at LettermanRow.com. This has been Rapid Reaction. It's brought to you by Byers Auto. That's Spencer Holrook, Tim May, Jeremy Birmingham, and I am Austin Ward. This is going to put a bow on everything from the horseshoe this season. They're going to close it up, going to put some new turf in here, uh, maybe spruce up this place. They're already taking down some of the decorations and getting ready for next season. Buckeyes on the road uh, for the game next week. We will be there. Stay with us at LettermanRow.com.